Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on RK News Network. Let's get started right now. We begin with some breaking news. At least five killed in shooting in Louisville, Kentucky, officials say. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. Discover unforgettable travel experiences at GetYourGuide.com. Stop trying to poop. That is not how you relieve constipation. Probiotics help you poop, right? Nope. According to building near the Louisville Slugger Field, witnesses say they heard multiple gunshots during the police response to the situation. Video from the scene shows a large police presence in the downtown area. CBS affiliate WLKY spoke with the husband of an employee inside the bank who said his wife was locked inside the vault as the shooter entered the building. Uh, so I deliver to the hospitals downtown uh, some of their environmental service product. I got a call from my wife panicking that she was locked in the vault, that there was an active shooter in the building, and called 911. By the time I got a hold of 911, they were already aware of it. I was approaching the scene right as the first officers were approaching the scene. Uh, no time wasted. They attempted to breach the building first. They were unsuccessful on the first breach. They backed off, pushed us back. We got people out of their cars in the middle of the street. Uh, and then we saw another round go back into the building. We heard multiple shots and then everything got quiet. That's when ambulance started arriving, fire, so on and so forth. Really terrifying, and it seems like details are still coming in. Yeah. Police say that the threat has been neutralized. Which is good news, but again, we are here sitting at this anchor desk, once again reporting on a mass casualty shooting in the United States of America. Uh, the next news conference is scheduled for 11.30 a.m. Eastern. We'll bring you that live as soon as it starts. Money Watch business analyst Jill Schlesinger is here to help. Okay, and we will keep you updated if we get more information into our newsroom about that. And now let's go into local news. Signs of Positivity Project in Nashua using Holiday Weekend to spread joy. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. <laughs> Never give up. You rock. <laughs> Reminders, we should all remember every day. And if you were driving around in Nashua Sunday, you had literal signs so you wouldn't forget it. It doesn't matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter what color you are, what political affiliation. We're human. And when it comes right down to it, we have to be human to one another, and we have to be kind to one another. Gregory James Amaral says the Signs of Positivity project started five years ago. He shares the first weekend was a hit, and by the second, they were getting publicity. And the next thing we knew, we were micro-famous. We were uh, micro-viral. Organizers say even the colors of the signs is meant to unify. In a time particularly where there was a lot of racial division going on, we wanted to specifically put everything in black and white to recognize that we are, we are one. They put themselves out there with the simple mission of spreading positivity, but they also want to inspire others to do the same. If you jump and you push yourself to be a little bit uncomfortable, you're going to find the growth that comes from that to be amazing. $69 U.S. Special Forces device turns men into beasts. This Marine Corps officer is bringing military technology. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Moose Trio spotted together near White Mountain National Forest sign. Let's take a listen to that video. 
Oh, time for our You Local Hot Shot of the morning. Check out this trio spotted yesterday on Easter. Look at that. One, two, three. Three moose seen by a sign the Mount White Mountain National Forest. That's great advertising, isn't it? Uh, you can share your <laughs> photos and videos by joining our You Local group on Facebook. This is what you're going to see in the White Mountains. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Great photo there. Florida Governor Ron DeSantos visiting New Hampshire this week. Let's take a listen to that video in that report. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is adding another stop to his recent round of out-of-state visits. DeSantis will be in the Granite State at the end of the week, and now South Carolina is on his itinerary as well. The Florida governor will be a headliner at the Republican Party fundraiser in Manchester on Friday. Officials say he's now planning an additional stop in South Carolina, a state where votes, of course, will be critical if he launches an expected 2024 presidential bid. The visits come amid recent stops to Pennsylvania, New York, and Michigan. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Tri-Town Ice Arena to undergo facility upgrades just as new Junior League team is introduced. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Uh, well, big news for the future of youth hockey in New Hampshire. A group of local investors are taking ownership of Tritown Ice Arena and planning to make some facility upgrades. At the same time, the North American Hockey League is coming to Hooksitz. That's a junior hockey league that will feature players who go on to play at the college level and beyond. The team will be called the New Hampshire Mountain Kings. You'll see tremendous hockey. You know, Tier 2 junior hockey is something that is, has not been showcased in, in, in the state of New Hampshire. They're here on that kind of year, that, that, that junior year, to get bigger, faster, and waiting for their opportunity to go play on their college team. How neat is that? The Mountain Kings will travel throughout the Northeast when the inaugural season kicks off this September. Hmm. So some more hockey to watch There here. you go. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Idaho mom accused of murdering her two children faces life in prison. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Idaho mom Lori Vallow Devo. She's going on trial almost three years after her arrest on charges of killing two of her children. Her husband is being tried separately. Dan Abrams standing by with his analysis of the case. First, Mola Lange joins us from Boise, Idaho. Good morning, Mola. Well, good morning, George. The 49-year-old is facing life in prison after prosecutors say she used her apocalyptic religious beliefs to justify the murders of her two children. This morning in Idaho, Lori Vallow Daybell will stand trial before a jury. Vallow Daybell on trial for killing her two children, 7-year-old JJ and 17-year-old Tylee, plus a third murder, her husband Chad's previous wife, Tammy. Prosecutors allege all three murders were part of a doomsday plot. They've been at this for a long time, for several years now, uh, pushing to get this case to trial and finally getting uh, the people responsible for it uh, to sit in front of a jury and... and uh, and be prosecuted for the charges. The grandparents of Vallow's son reported the children missing in 2019 after Vallow privately married Chad Daybell in Hawaii yes. and joined his religious group. Sir. Can you tell me where your kids are, Chad and Lori? In divorce papers, Vallow's ex-husband Charles said Lori believed she was a godlike figure who called the children zombies and said she was sent to usher in the apocalypse. Ever since she's been involved in this doomsday cult, that is not the same lorry that we knew for 13 years. After nine months of searching, the children's remains were found in a shallow grave on their stepfather's property. When Vala was arrested in February of 2020, Daybell insisted the kids are safe. Is, is, there, is there anything that you would like to say to people at all who are, number one, concerned about the kids? We just have to wait for the legal process to order through. Several more deaths occurring within months of J.J. and Tylee's disappearance. Chad's ex-wife, Tammy's death, originally ruled natural before investigators alleged Lori and Chad killed her in order to collect her life insurance money. 
In the summer of 2019, Lori Vallow's now deceased brother, Alex Cox, killed her previous husband, Charles Vallow, in what was originally ruled self-defense. The couple has maintained their innocence, pleading not guilty to the charges. If convicted, Vallow could face life in prison without parole after the death penalty was taken off the table. They would hope that it would be a guilty verdict on both cases, uh, not just Lori's, but the other case. Well, Chad Daybell, also charged in the murder of the two children, will have a separate trial. A trial date has not yet been set, George. Okay, Mola, thanks very much. It's me and our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. This is this a tough case for the prosecution? Uh, look, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence here, right? If you look at the totality of the circumstances, it looks terrible for them, right? They don't report their kids missing. Uh, they, they, they don't seem to know where their kids are. They won't produce their kids, et cetera. And then, of course, they find the two bodies uh, near Chad's home. So all of that looks terrible. But for the prosecution, they're still going to have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she murdered them. And that doesn't mean she has to have actually committed the murder herself, but that she was involved in the planning, that she was involved in the preparation, etc. And that's going to be the challenge, is getting over from just looks really bad to committed murder. So what's the defense's team's strategy here? Yeah, so I think there are going to be a couple things. First of all, they're going to focus on reasonable doubt. Uh, I don't expect that she would testify in connection with this case. They already seem to be suggesting an alibi defense, that she wasn't there at the time the murders likely occurred, although that doesn't explain how she could have planned or been involved in a conspiracy to commit murder. And it sounds like she may point the finger at her brother who becomes a critical player in this. Now, whether she points the finger at him, suggests he might have done it, he's died now. And he was involved in the death of another uh, one of their spouses. And so wow. it is possible that the defense will, will suggest at the least it could have been him, if not, it was him, but he's going to become a central figure in the case. And how likely is it that Chad Daybell makes a deal to testify against his wife? You know, I thought about this. I think it's unlikely. I mean, first of all, prosecutors would have to offer a deal to him, right? They would have to believe that he was less culpable than she was. And as a result, that it was worth making a deal with him to come forward and testify against her. So far, no indications that that's going to happen. But in these kinds of cases, you never know. Well, and you'll be watching. I will. Dan Abrams, yep. thanks so much. We appreciate it. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thank okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And let's go into weather and see how the weather is out there. I have done all the things a wife is supposed to do. After some sunshine over the weekend, it looks like we keep the sunny stretch of weather going through a good portion of this week. Nothing more than a passing shower tomorrow up in the north country. Otherwise, we are mainly dry heading into next weekend. We're looking at temperatures today up into the 60s. Much lighter breeze with sunshine. It should feel pretty good into the afternoon. And temperatures by the end of the week going up into the 70s, both Thursday and Friday. You will notice early this morning a weak front back to the west that will trail across northern areas with a chance of a passing shower later tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, we will be looking at temperatures in the 60s today, a cooling sea breeze at the coastline after highs near 60. That will develop after 1 or 2 o'clock this afternoon. Again, a much lighter breeze than what we had over the weekend. This will be with full sunshine and just a few high clouds later on today. You will see that chance of a passing shower for the north country either later tonight or during in the daylight hours tomorrow. Temperatures again tomorrow will be in the 60s, although a couple of interior sections of southern New Hampshire could reach up near 70 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Not done there as temperatures behind that weak system glide back into the low and mid 60s for highs on Wednesday with a northwesterly wind. We start to turn that wind back to the west and southwest for both Thursday and Friday. Temperatures up into the 70s Thursday and a chance that a couple of southern areas away from the coastline reach 80 degrees on Friday. Paul and counts continuing to build here now as we go forward with the dry weather this week. These will only continue to get higher. We are looking out of a scale of 12, them ranging from around 6 or 7 today to up around 10 out of 12 by Thursday. Sunshine, warm afternoon, sea breeze at the coastline will be the cool spot later on this afternoon before again fading into the 30s overnight. Couple of notches warmer tomorrow. There will be the sea breeze again at the coastline later in the afternoon and the chance of a shower up north. There's your seven-day forecast. Two warmest days, Thursday and Friday. Sunshine continuing into the weekend. 
Okay, and there you go on that weather forecast from meteorologist Kevin Skrupa. And that is it for this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on RK News Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great day, everyone, and goodbye.